This morning on Wake Up With Hope, we have amazing news with Ronnie Mills, a devotional thought, and a little talk on airplanes. Plus, Ready, Set, Cook is back with yet another delicious recipe. Stay with us. Good morning and welcome to Wake Up With Hope. What a blessing to be at the end of yet another week. How are you doing this morning? Are you ready for the weekend? Send us a message on our official Hope Channel Facebook page and let us know. We enjoy hearing from you. Yes, we do. Believe it or not, Christian and I look through those <laughs> messages that you send and we read them and our hearts are blessed to hear from you. Welcome to Friday morning at Wake Up With Hope. This week has seemingly flown by we are delighted to wake up with you today. We are sure you will be blessed this morning with us because we have some really good things in store. We have amazing news from Ronnie Mills and a devotional thought and a little talk on airplanes. Plus, Ready, Set, Cook is back with yet another delicious recipe. But first, this day in history. Orville and Wilbur Wright or the Wright brothers are known for their famous first successful flight in history of a self-propelled heavier-than-air aircraft. Orville piloted the gasoline-powered propeller-driven biplane, which stayed aloft for 12 seconds and covered 120 feet on its inaugural flight. The Wright brothers grew up in Dayton, Ohio, and became interested in aviation after learning of glider flights from the German engineer Otto Lilienthal. Once they developed this interest, the brothers put all of their energies into developing a heavier-than-air aircraft. In order to sustain their interest and to be able to fund their experiments, they opened a bicycle business and had several other businesses as well. They then exhaustively researched the work of other engineers in developing aircraft and then found a suitable place to conduct glider tests. They settled on Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. The Wright brothers went on to successfully fly hundreds of glider flights, build a wind tunnel, design a 12 horsepower internal combustion engine with the assistance of machinist Charles Taylor, and built a new aircraft to house it. Finally, on this day in history in 1903, the Wright brothers flew a powered aircraft that stayed aloft for 12 seconds and flew 120 feet and thus the modern aviation age was born. What a story of great determination and it all started with the dream and a vision. What about you friends? What do you dream of? What do you aspire for? Friends, there's hope that God wants each one of us to have. He wants us to dream of heaven. He wants us to dream of a place where there will be no more fear, no more pain, no sadness or tears. And when we dream, He wants us to remember that one day our dream can become a reality. Today, let us direct our minds to focus on eternity. Let us live as soon-to-be citizens of heaven. As it says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 20, lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Let us begin by laying treasures in heaven, by saying yes to hope, peace, and love that Jesus offers us today. This morning on Wake Up With Hope, we have a special feature from the chefs at Ready, Set, Cook. They have a wonderful cabbage salad recipe for us today, shall we?
That was good. How's that for your next craving for something flavorful and healthy? Have you ever tried any of our recipes? Send us a message if you have on our Facebook page and let us know. We would love to see what you tried. I'm sure it was delicious. We would love to hear. And well, friends, we have to take a short break now. But when we return, Ronnie Mills will be here to share with us some Hope Channel news. Stay with us. And don't forget to visit us at hopetv.org slash wake up to see what we are up to or to rewatch any segment. And don't forget to share with a friend. Wake up with hope. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Wake Up With Hope. We hope you will be blessed by our program today. This morning, Ronnie Mills from our very own Hope Channel is here to share some Hope Channel news with us. Ronnie, we can't wait to hear from you. We are rapidly approaching the end of 2021. More than ever, we need your support to continue the quality and life-changing Bible-based programming that we produce here at Hope Channel. Listen to my interview with Donor Francis on why she supports Hope Channel. Greetings, Francis. It is great to talk to a fellow Tar Heel. And what's better than that, to speak to someone who's also a financial supporter of this powerful impact movement, Hope Channel. Francis, welcome. Thank you so much for letting me be part of this. I appreciate the opportunity. Amen. Well, we're just honored to have you today. Uh, Francis, how did you discover Hope Channel? Well, I uh, have for a number of years been kind of, you know, going through channels, trying mm -hmm. to find something that would teach or inspire and help me know the Bible more. Mm -hmm. uh, and at some point, I just uh, forgot about it. Uh, but during the, the COVID epidemic, uh, with being uh, so isolated, I flipped through the channels and the help of God found Hope Channel and started watching it and found program after program that not only uplifted my spirits, but taught me uh, and showed me so much about the Bible that I had not fully understood. Uh, a lot of great uh, other information as far as other parts of the human need uh, regarding spiritual, mm -hmm. like uh, the channels that uh, teach you about food or history or relationships or missions. Um, and just beautiful other programs like Creation uh, that just says all the nature pictures and scripture across them that is so restful at times. Mm. So I've made it my main channel. Amen. Uh, and found that there's no need for me to channel hop anymore. Mm. Mm. Amen. You hear that, America? Frances has made Hope Channel her main channel. She doesn't need the remote. She's only using one channel now. Now, there are many worthy causes that people can support in the world. For someone today who is trying to decide if they should donate to Hope Channel, what would you say to them? I would say if somebody is trying to decide to donate, it's definitely like when the Holy Spirit was knocking at my heart mm. and saying, you have so much to be appreciated, your spirit is be, being fed all hours of the day and night. Give back to those that have given to you. And so it became a no-brainer uh, then to sit down, write out a check, uh, and help those that helped me. Wow, wow. Well, Sister Francis, we thank you again for being part of the Mighty Impact Movement of Hope Channel and your testimony today has inspired the whole Hope Channel team to work harder for Jesus Christ. Thank you again for being part of the impact movement that Jesus is using through Hope Channel to prepare people for his soon return. God bless you. 
Won't you be like Francis and become part of the impact movement here at Hope Channel? There's no better investment that you can make this year than by donating today and helping introduce someone to Christ through Hope Channel so they can experience a better life now and for eternity. Call today and one of our donor care team members will take your donation at 1-888-446-7388. That's 1-888-446-7388 or donate online at hopetv.org slash donate. Thank you, Ronnie. We have to take a break now, but when we return, we will have today's devotional moment. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Wake Up With Hope. Thank you for staying with us this morning. It's now time for our devotional thought. Good morning. and Thank you for tuning in to Wake Up With Hope. My name is Dr. Carlton Bird, and I'm the Speaker Director for Breath of Life Television Ministries. And this morning, I have something powerful and inspirational to share with you. But before I share with you, let's talk with God. Lord, thank you this morning for another day. We pray your blessings on us and in our nugget we share with your people. In Jesus' name, amen. This morning, I want to share something from the book of Jonah. And I begin by reading Jonah chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. The Word of God says, from the King James Version of the Bible, Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly, and said, I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord, and he heard me. Out of the belly of hell cried I, and thou heardest my voice. Now most of us, we know the story of Jonah as recorded in the book of Jonah. Jonah has only four chapters, but the lessons in Jonah are so numerous I could preach countless sermons on Jonah, but that would keep us all day. And so because I can't do that, I'll only share a few lessons this morning. Now, there are many themes and lessons from this short book, but at the end of the day, the story of Jonah is about following God's leadings. When you follow God, you triumph. When you don't follow God, get ready for trouble. In Jonah chapter one, God tells Jonah to go to Nineveh and preach the word. But Jonah doesn't want to go to Nineveh. Why? Nineveh was the place where they sent preachers to punish them. Nineveh was the city nobody wanted to go to. Nineveh was the place where preachers went to die. In fact, according to the historical record, Nineveh was the most despicable, most cruel, most evil, most idolatrous city in the world. Ninevites would cut the heads off of enemy soldiers and stack them up outside the city. Ninevites would then skin their enemies' bodies and hang their skin on their city's walls. But yet, God says to Jonah, go to Nineveh, go to that great city and preach the word. And friends, I'm a witness that when God sends a preacher to a city, God doesn't tell the preacher exactly what will happen in the city. He just tells the preacher what to say in the city. What's the word for all of us from this? Sometimes in life's journey, Sometimes God just leads us one step at a time without telling us what the next steps are. And he doesn't tell us what's going to happen until we get to our destination. Because if he told you now, you might abandon the journey because you don't want to go through any pain. But please know that when you're on God's path, when you follow God's leadings, God will protect you because God never sends you anywhere where God can't keep you. The familiar cliche says, God wouldn't take you to it if God couldn't bring you through it. That's why we have to have faith. We have to believe what we can't see. God told Jonah, go to Nineveh, preach the word. But Jonah disobeys God and runs to a city called Tarshish instead. And when you disobey God, when you don't follow God, remember, you're headed for trouble. Here are some lessons from Jonah. Jonah 1.3 says, but Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and Jonah went down. Lesson number one, whenever you run from God, you're going down. Whenever you run from God, whenever you don't follow God's leadings, you're always gonna be on a trip down. You wonder what's going wrong in your life. You wonder why nothing is going up, why nothing's going right, why you got trouble after trouble. It's because you're running from God. Because anytime you run from God, it's always a trip down. But not only that, the Bible says in verse three, and Jonah went down to Joppa 
and he found a ship. That's lesson number two. Anytime you run from God, you will always find a ship. There's always a willing vessel. There's always a willing ship that's trying to move you from the presence of God. When you're running from God, isn't it amazing how quick you can get into a relationship? Isn't it easy how you can get into certain friendships, certain fellowships? There's always a ship that's trying to move you from the presence of God. And I don't know about you, but I don't want any ship, any relationship, any friendship, any fellowship that's going to take me away from the presence of God. Because not only will you find a ship, but lesson number three is you will have to pay a fare. Anytime you're running from God, it's going to cost you something. It's expensive. There's a price you have to pay. I don't care how good that relationship is. I don't care how good that fellowship is. I don't care how good that friendship is. If you're running from God, it's going to cost you something. I believe this morning there's someone watching who knows what I'm talking about because you've been in some relationships that have cost you something, a relationship that was expensive. Jonah went down in a ship and it cost him something. Now, why are you going to get in a ship to make your life go down? You can do bad by yourself. Next lesson, Jonah 1.4 says, But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. Lesson number four, after you go down in a ship, pay a fare, you then face a storm. When you run from God, when you don't follow his leadings, a storm will always follow you. That's why you have to be careful what ship you get in. That's why you have to be careful who you get involved with. Because if folk are running from God, if they're not following his leadings and they're in your ship, they're in your circle, they're in your group, you better get ready for a storm. I don't care again how good that relationship is, how good that friendship is, how good that fellowship is, you will face a storm. But Jonah chapter one ends with Jonah facing a storm and Jonah's life is in danger. And the men in Jonah's ship, remember, they throw him overboard, but God sends a great fish to swallow Jonah up. And Jonah's in the fish for three days and three nights. Chapter two now begins by telling us Jonah does the only thing he knows how to do. Jonah prays in the belly of the fish, Jonah prays. And that's lesson number five. When facing a storm, pray. Jonah says in verse two of chapter two, I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord. And he heard me. Out of the belly of hell cried I, and thou heardest my voice. Jonah disobeys God. Jonah goes down. Jonah finds himself in a ship. Jonah has to pay a high fare. Jonah faces a storm. Jonah's life is in danger, but Jonah prayed. Somebody knows that something happens when you pray. God hears us when we pray. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. That's lesson number five, pray. And friends, those are our five lessons for today. Lesson number one. Whenever you run from God, you're going down. Lesson number two, anytime you run from God, you will always find a ship. Lesson number three, anytime you're running from God, it's gonna cost you something. There's a price you will pay. Lesson number four, after you go down in a ship and pay the fare, you will then face a storm. But then lesson number five, when you face a storm, make sure you pray. Thank you for tuning in and join us for our next episode as we share three additional lessons from Jonah, giving us a total of eight lessons. Until then, may God bless you. Amen. Thank you so much for sharing those words of encouragement with us this morning. And thank you for watching Wake Up With Hope. If you would like to learn more about our program, rewatch a segment or an entire episode during the weekend or share with a friend, please visit us at hopetv.org slash wakeup. 
We look so forward to seeing you on Monday, so don't forget to start your week off with us. Jean Boonstra from Voice of Prophecy will be sharing a devotional thought, and Kenya Reyes will be joining us to share upcoming events here on Hope Channel. Plus, Gia and Olive will be back with a delicious avocado sushi recipe. You don't want to miss that. And if you enjoyed today's devotional thought and would like to learn more, visit hope.study to receive your free Bible study guides. Easy to remember, hope.study. And we are sure our free Bible studies will be such a blessing to you, to your neighbors, co-workers, family members, as they have been to so many other people. We are ready to start our weekend now, friends. We can take these beautiful reminders of God's love with us through the weekend. We truly hope you have a wonderful weekend and we can't wait to see you on Monday. Amen. Don't go too far because before you leave, we want to share with you a Bible promise. Today's Bible promise says, my father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going to there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me so that you may also be there where I am. John chapter 14, verses two and three. What a blessed hope we can have in Jesus. This world with all its pain and suffering is not the end. Jesus is preparing something better, much better, far better for us in heaven. May we draw closer to him today so that we can be ready to meet him when he returns. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, today, Lord, it's not just another ordinary day. Today is a day of preparation a day to prepare for your soon coming. We know, Lord, that the weekend often has unexpected surprises, but Lord, you're going ahead of us. You know what is coming and we're gonna trust you. May we all have a restful, peaceful weekend so we can gather once together, together once again next week to begin yet another journey with you. Thank you for answering our prayers in Jesus' name, amen.